the book of St. John, chapter 6. <clears throat> I have been asked this question many times. I've had many people healed under my ministry. Where's the lady that's here tonight that the Lord healed your back last night? Stand to your feet. He was telling me, where you are, honey? That's the lady back here. Give her a hand clap and give the Lord one too. Praise God. Lord healed her back last night. Jesus knows what he's doing. St. John chapter 6, I have many people have asked me. I've had many marvelous miracles. I've prayed, <coughs> excuse me, for many, many people. And God has healed many. And the ones that did not receive healing, it's not that God didn't want to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. They just couldn't receive it. And you need to learn how to receive these things. You need to believe in healing, believe in the fullness of the word, but how do you receive it? Let's face it, when your back's up against the wall and you're about ready to lose your business or lose your job and you're about ready to lose your home, how do you get this miracle to work for you? In other words, I mean, let's face it, you need it today. You don't need it two weeks from now. St. John chapter 6, I want to start reading, <coughs> excuse me, with verse, uh, let's start reading verse 21. The title of my sermon tonight, and I'll probably preach this sermon over. I got a feeling I will because I've never preached it before, but I, 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 this question has been asked. Brother Jesse, how do you do these things? How do you get into that realm of God where God can let the Zoe life that's in you, in God, flow out of you, and in, 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 in doing that, create a miracle, a healing, or whatever it may be? And the title of my sermon tonight is Doing the Works of the Father. Doing the works of the Father or doing the works of God, whichever you want to say. Now, notice something about Jesus. How many people believe in Jesus? Amen. Now, we're the only people in the world that is serving a living leader. Buddha is dead. Muhammad is dead. But Jesus is alive and doing well. And he's not on the cross by no means. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us right now, even as we're ministering the Word of God. He is a high priest. He's an intercessor. He's a mediator. And he's an advocate. He has four jobs. He's an intercessor for the Christian. He's an advocate for the sinner. And he's a mediator for the sinner also. He's an advocate also for the Christian. Sometimes we sin. The Bible said that we do sin, that we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, who will help us. In other words, minister life. Advocate means lawyer. Everybody needs a lawyer once in a while. Praise God. St. John chapter 6, title of the sermon, doing the works of God or doing the works of the Father. Verse 21, <coughs> then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Now I'll be reading out of the King James. You may have an American standard or something, another translation, but it'll say roughly the same thing. Verse 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none of a boat there, save that one wherein two his disciples were in it, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, how be it? There came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. Notice they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore, anytime there's a therefore in the Bible, find out what it's there for. When the people therefore saw, notice that. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, or a priest, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, notice this. Notice he did not answer their question. He read their hearts. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you. Now notice those three words, verily, verily. I say unto you all more than three words, that verily, verily. You can hear a prophet of the Lord say, Thus saith the Lord thy God. See? But when Jesus talks, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. There's quite a difference there. Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Everybody's always looking for something. I love President Reagan. He said a statement that really shocked me. He said, if you pay people to be poor, they will stay poor. And I got to thinking about that. That is so true. But if you can create a job for a man that he can better himself, every man wants to better himself. Every woman wants to better herself. But they got some people with what I call welfare attitudes. I want you to listen to that. 
And I believe in the welfare system. Don't misunderstand. I'm not knocking anybody. But what I'm saying is if you can do better and you got the ability to do better, then you should. So what these people here was, well, they had welfare attitudes. They said, Jesus said, y'all just followed me for the fish and the loaves. These same people saw him break the bread and the fish and fed thousands. Now notice, Jesus used, and I told Brother Jerry, he had a dimension of faith. God gave him a dimension of faith. And it's so powerful that not only did it supply the 5,000 to 4,000, but it supplied more food than they could eat. And at one time, I believe it was 12 baskets over, and another time, I believe it was seven baskets. That's how powerful faith is. It would always give you more than enough because God is the El Shaddai, which means the God that's more than enough. Now, keep reading with me. Notice what he's saying here. Let's read verse 26 again. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto the everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Notice that. Now, let's, what they, this is what they say unto him. Then they said unto him, and this is the statement that's asked me all the time, probably ask you all the time, and here it is. Then said they unto them, What shall we do that we, notice you, that we might work the works of God. That we might work the works of God. How do you get people healed? How do you get them saved? How do you get them out of financial depression? How do you get a guy off of alcohol? How do you get them out of drugs? How do you stop a prostitute in the prostitution? How do you change him? This is what they say. How do we work the works of God? Read that with me again. Then they said unto him, What shall we do? that we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, how many of you people believe the red parts of the Bible? Yeah. See, so why are you saying the red parts? How many of you people, what I'm about ready to read, in red? Hold up, hold your hand up. See, so why did you ask that? Well, some people don't believe in some of the black parts. They cut out chapters, but they're still there. Hallelujah. Notice what he says. Now, here is the secret of the whole shebang. This is how you get it done. How do we work the works of God? And Jesus answered it so simple. And he said this. This, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that you believe. Everybody circle that word in your Bible. That you believe on him whom he hath sent. How do you work the works of God? You believe on Jesus Christ. And on the Father, because he's the one that's sinning. Let me read that again. This is the work of God that you believe on him, whom he hath sent. So how do you get people healed? How do you get out of financial depression? How do you do these things? Well, the first thing you must do is believe. And the word believe means trusting in, adhering to, and relying on. When you believe something in the fullness, it will cause or enact a physical manifestation of what you're praying for. How do you get two loaves or five loaves and a few fish into a hunt to feed thousands of people? He believed because the Bible said, as I read earlier, that he gave thanks. The Bible said, bring your petition and supplication with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Why did Jesus say with thanksgiving because he knew if you will say thank you you're believing bless God in other words you're already thanking him for what he's going to do he's not going to turn you down so he said bring your petition and supplication with thanksgiving that means bless God you're going to get your prayer answered when you understand that in that life point one of the sermon it says this you as a believer must let the word teach you and instruct you as you study there are a lot of people reading the word of God studying the word of God they won't accept it Jesus said my people are destroyed not the world not the sinner but you the people that believe my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge now that's not talking about a physical knowledge that's talking about a revelation knowledge or a spiritual knowledge of the word of God so you as a believer must, this, you've got to do this. You as a believer must let the word teach and instruct you as you, as you study. In other words, the word will bring against your, in other words, the word will, call, will come against everything your natural mind says 
to do. Because the Word is spirit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. You have to understand that spiritual forces are here today. So how do we do the works of God? I'll read it to you again. I want you to get this in your spirit. Jesus says, this is the work of God that you believe on him. Notice he said, believe on the Father. Some people deny that the Father exists today. Some people deny that the Holy Ghost exists today. They say, well, it's only Jesus. Well, bless God, how many of y'all believe the red parts? Hold your hand up, you believe the red parts. Where's he, what he said? This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Believe on Jesus whom he. Who's the other he? The father. Notice something about Jesus. He never once called his father God. I've got a sermon you need to order. Don't call me God. Call me father. You ought to hear that sermon. If God tell me, I'll preach it tomorrow night if he tells me to. Don't call me God. Call me father. So the point is this, you as a believer must let the word teach and instruct you as you study. The word will cause your mind to be unfruitful. How many times you went to Little Rock, Shreveport, Monroe, wherever, to go shopping and you're walking down a mall and you see some crippled person and your spirit man says, what's God go with that? Lay your hands on them, pray the prayer of faith, jerk them out that wheelchair and they're going to get healed. Your spirit man says, come on boy, let's do it. Your mind says, control yourself, fool. Don't get crazy with this thing. <laughs> Notice that. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Most Christians' problem is in the soulless realm, which is the mind, the will, and the emotion of man. So notice something. You, as you study the Word of God, you must allow it to instruct you and teach you. And sometimes I read some things in this Word of God where it just knocks me down. My mind says, no, that don't work. That can't work. That can't work. God said, if you're going to do the work of God, you must let the Word teach you and instruct you and guide you in the things that I want you to do. So I've had to kind of take my mind and set it aside. Why? Because my mind is unfruitful in the spiritual things of God until it's renewed to understand what God is saying for me to do. So you as a believer must let the Word teach you. Are you letting the Word of God teach you tonight? Are you letting the Word of God instruct you tonight to such a degree that the Word of God will produce everything you prayed because when you prayed, you believe that you receive and you shall. See? Can you get into that limit of thinking? Now, some people, they stinking thinking. But there's such a thing as revelation thinking. Thinking as God thinks. Now, some people tell you, well, bless the Lord, brother. Just that. The Bible says God is mysterious. He works in a mysterious way. You never know what God's going to do. I do. I know exactly what he's going to do. How do you know that? I've read his book. He's only going to do what his book says. Well, you can't believe that. Well, I have to. If I believe this book told me I could get saved, I've got to believe everything else. If you don't think I know God's thoughts, because some preachers say, God says my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and all that kind of stuff. That's true. That's in the old covenant, but you're a new covenant person. The Bible says you've got the mind of Christ. You can understand what God's saying. And if you listen to the Word of God, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will tell you things that are happening at the throne of the El Shaddai God. But you've got to get into that intimate relationship to do the work of God. I totally believe on Jesus. And I totally believe that his father hath sent him. So when God tells me to move in the light, when God tells me, call that woman out, do this, I may not know who you are, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that what God said will come to pass. And time don't have nothing to do with it. I had a woman one time tell me, Brother Jesse, what you told me hadn't come to pass yet. I said, oh, you did? She said, no. I said, well, hang on. <laughs> Don't worry about the time factor. Just believe the Word of God. Let the Word of God teach you and instruct you as you're standing in that presence of the Holy Father. When you understand that in that light, then you can walk and do the works. Notice Jesus. He said, must my Father in me that doeth the work. He didn't care if Lazarus was dead four days, stinking like a stuck hog. Didn't care if they didn't paid for all the flowers, sealed the whole tune up. He said, bless God, when I get there, Lazarus is coming out that tomb. Why? Because he let his Father instruct him and teach him in the ways that he should walk in. Now, let's face it. How many of you people, if I made an announcement tonight that I'm going to the nearest graveyard in Camden 
and we're going to raise everybody from the dead. You'd hear a lot of people say, praise God. That's not a praise God, I believe it. That's a praise God, I got to come see this thing, boy. <laughs> and let's face it. If someone died in this church and they happened to pass them through the church and somebody was walking by to pay their respects and they looked and said, oh, get up in the name of Jesus and that body come out that coffin, brother, you wouldn't have to worry about that room. They would knock the walls down to get away from the man. You'd say, I want to see this miracle from afar off. And the first thing you will say out of your mouth, I see it, but I don't believe it. <laughs> the Bible says believing is seeing. The world says seeing is believing. So notice this. Point one of the sermon. You as a believer must let the word of God teach you and instruct you in all things. If God said he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, he ain't broke. You ain't got no money. Don't make no difference. You ever open up your wallet, looked inside, and there was an abundance of lack? call air <laughs> nothing in there oh god what am i gonna do well close your wallet that's the first thing you need to do get on philippians 419 and don't move off of it now don't start looking for things in your house to sell trying to meet the need because let's face it some things you're gonna sell you won't you know what i'm saying what you need to do is let the word of God teach you and instruct you. In other words, don't put no limits on God whatsoever. Just believe his word. I call my office today. Boy, they're spending money. They say, boy, that's it. We enjoying ourselves. I hung up the phone and said, God, that's my money. I got five people that work for me. And let me tell you something. When I come in, I'm boss hog of the place. I sign the checks. When I walk in, them two secretaries just come run up to me and say, uh, Jesse, is there anything you need? Last time I buzz them on the phone, D. Oh, man, and then fine. Yes, sir. One of, one of my secretaries is my wife. I love it. It's a blessing. I told her, you don't give me no lip between 8.30 and 4.30. After that, chew like you want, son. But between 8.30 and 4.30, sometimes I'll just buzz and say, get in here right now. Boy, I know she's steaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, look at your watch, woman. I said, it's 9.35. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> She goes, what can I do for you, sir? The other day, she came in my office. She said, can I talk to you, Jesse? And I thought, my God, something wrong with my kid? I said, what's the matter? She said, I need to talk to you. She said, it's very serious. She said, so she closed the door. She sat down. I said, well, what's the matter? She says, I feel that I warrant a raise. <laughs> I mean, just wham, just like that. After a while, Beverly opened up the door. She said, um... I wouldn't mind having a little bit more myself. <laughs> then I found out everybody want more. I got mad at my daughter the other day. She wanted to buy some of them Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. Gloria got a lot of money. The price of them jeans, she's rich. 50 bucks, I believe, or 55 dollars. I said, Johnny, that's 55 dollars for a pair of jeans. She said, well, look here, Dad. You're the one that preached this stuff, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I believe in being blessed in the mall. That's what she said. <laughs> she said, you're the one that said, let the word instruct me. I'm in letting it instruct me now. Come on, God, Daddy, deliver. <laughs> See, as far as she's concerned, I've got to produce. Why? Because I'm her father. You follow what I'm trying to say? Get the parallel of what I'm trying to say. Doing the works of father. How do you do that, Jesus? Well, just believe on me that I cannot return board on my word. If my word says it, it's law, no matter what circumstances say. That's what God's saying today to you. How do you get healed, Brother Jesse? Believe on Jesus and on the father that sent him. Why? Because he took your infirmity and bared your sickness, and by the stripes on Jesus' back, you were healed. He'd done that 2,000 years ago. You see what I'm saying? Say, I believe that. Do you? Do you really? I, yeah, I believe. You really? Yeah, uh, yeah you really? Ooh. I think so. <laughs> I never forget my mother. My mother was precious to me. She was a blessing. She went home to be with the Lord a couple of years ago. 
When I first thought preaching, she'd come over, and I'll never forget that. It was about five years. You know, she said, how you doing, Jesse? I said, I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. Hallelujah, praise God. He made me the head not the tail, mama. She said, how much groceries you got? Boy, and we'd be talking, I'd see her get up, and she's ever slow. She'd sneak into my kitchen and open up the cupboard to make sure that her boy had some food. You know, because when you first start out, you don't know nobody. You know how things are. They ever come against you with everything he's got. She would look like that. I said, Mama, don't worry about it. Well, I just want to make sure. You know, you know, and and, and I never forget. As, as as old as I got, I was all her. I was always her baby boy. Now I wasn't a baby boy. I got a brother of mine that's the baby of the family. I was in the middle. She said, Jesse, you know, you were such a sinner. She said, I really prayed a lot for you because you were Jesse. You was a heathen. I used to, people used to ask me if you was my son, and I would tell them no. Because <laughs> you know, I, my God, because you would, you would do anything, anywhere. And I would. It didn't make me no difference. And I, I'll never forget that one time I was in church, and <laughs> I walked in, and this lady walked in, my mom said, is that your boy? She said, who? She said, boy, she said, I ain't never saw that boy in my life. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Let's get out of here, man. <laughs> you know, because I would embarrass my mom and dad. I was a very detrimental heathen. When I'd come into church, I would just love to do anything. You want an example of what I did one time? <laughs> no, I ain't going to tell you that. Praise <laughs> God. Because I'm not going to glorify Satan. Everybody wanted to know. Look at me and say, wonder what he done. Wonder what he done. But you see, when I got saved, I decided to let the word of God instruct me and teach me, even though my mind became unfruitful to it. Even though my mind said, no, no, that doesn't make sense. Even though a lot of people say, now, don't get crazy with the word of God. No, no, I'm going to let the word of God instruct me because Jesus said, this is how you do the work of God. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he had sent. So I believed on Jesus. Jesus would tell me, Jesse, you really believe me? I said, Jesus, I believe you. He said, then anything I ask you to do, you'll do it. I said, God, anything you ask me to do, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll suck it. He said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. Went to Dallas, Texas, combing my hair one time, and the Lord said, I want you to give your watch away. I said, oh, I just bought the watch, God. He said, I know, but didn't you say you'd do anything I asked you to do? I said, did I say that? <laughs> he said, you sure did. I said, but Lord, it's my watch. He said, I know it's your watch. He said, I'd like you to give it away. I said, could I give it to myself? <laughs> I mean, since I like it. He said, then I tell you get away. I said, yeah, I like, I, but Lord, it's mine. He said, if you don't want to give it, that's fine. I said, I'm going to give it. Who do you want me to give it to? He said, now don't get mad. I said, I'm not mad. I may sound mad, but I am mad. He said, I want you to give it to the associate pastor of this church. I said, does he need it? You know, I even know some people like that. God tell them to give you something. The first thing you want to know if you need it or not. Think about that for a second. He said, do you want to do the work of God? I said, I sure do. He said, do you want the anointing to flow through you? I said, I do. He didn't said, obey me. He said, when they give you the service tonight, you give Joe Slaughter your watch. I said, oh, Jesus. Okay, okay, praise God. I said, devil, get away from me, you demon devil from hell. I can rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I give it freely because my father asked me of it. Well, little did I realize Joe Slaughter and his wife had prayed over his watch the day before because they stopped running and they didn't have enough money to buy another one. He had one of them uh, Mickey Mouse con, one of them trashy watches. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So when I got the thing, the Lord spoke to Joe Slaughter, and I was flying into Dallas, Texas. The Lord said, Joe, I'm going to do something for you today I've never done for you before. You're going you're gonna to enjoy this. Well, praise God, that night they gave me, or was about ready to give me the service, Joe Slaughter jumps to his feet, begins to prophesy under the anointing of God. He prophesies to the musicians on the platform. Well, people get blessed, a glorious prophecy. He sits down, the first thing comes to his mind and says, well, Lord, I, you said I, you'd, do me, you'd do something for me today that you've never done before. Uh, maybe this was it, but I prophesied before, but maybe I haven't prophesied that strong before. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, that's what he was thinking. Now, I didn't know none of this is going on. I'm thinking in just a few minutes, my watch will be gone. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. Well, praise God. Pastor Hester says, uh, Evangelist Jesse the Plan is coming to the platform, and there were 1,760-something people there. Boy, they all, oh, praise God. And I got up there, and I said, praise God. I said, Joe Slaughter, come up here. And the first thing he thought of was, Jesse going to give me a word of knowledge, going to move the gifts of the Spirit. I said, the Lord told me to give you my watch. I began to up and buckle my watch. He went, what? I said, the Lord told me to give you my watch. Now, here it is, boy. 
And boy, he starts crying. And his wife jumps up and starts crying because they didn't have enough money to buy him one. So the first thing he did, he, talked, he took off that old trashy watch. He said, you want that? I said, I don't want that junk, brother. Not me, I don't want that. He said, well, what I'm going to do it. I said, throw it away. It ain't no good, son. So he just threw it off the platform. Boy, he's excited. Boy, I got back to the hotel, and I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, God, I've done it. He said, I'm proud of you. Jesse, you've done the work of God. You've become a giver. I said, yeah. He said, what kind of watch do you want? I said, what? The Lord said, what do you want? I said, <clears throat> he said, when you pray, pray specifically. What kind of watch do you want? I said, well, since we're talking... <laughs> a Rolex wouldn't be bad. I don't want his younger brother Timex. I want the big boy, Rolex. He said, what kind? I said, uh, any kind. He said, any kind. He said, Rolex has many kinds of watches. I said, well, Lord, I ain't never looked down there to find out what kind of Rolex. I said, give me the best one to make. He said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. And a man walked up to me, brother, and has an $8,000 watch. Look at it. You can touch it. It's real. Go ahead. Put your hand on it. That's just what... Look at it. You ever seen an $8,000 watch? Go ahead and touch it, son. Go on. <laughs> Go ahead. It's all right. Isn't that a blessing? Ain't that good looking? Would you look at that? Ain't that beautiful? It's mine, too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, God just gave me the watch. I like to freak out. You ever seen an $8,000 watch, honey? Look at it. Isn't that good looking? I thought so myself. He didn't tell me to give it to you. He just told me to keep it right there. <laughs> Praise God. So I Hallelujah. You want to see it, brother? <laughs> Look, isn't that a blessing of God? That's about the best you can get. See? Look at that thing. Ain't that? The streets are made of that kind of stuff. I really believe when the rapture going to come first, this arm's going up first. <laughs> you know? Praise God. I thought, Jesus. He said, well, didn't you want to roll it? I said, yeah, but I, I mean... I didn't think you were going to give me a El Presidente. That's what they call them things. He said, you like it? I said, oh, I love it. He said, would you give it away? I said, is this God? <laughs> oh, my God. He said, would you give it away? I said, Lord, I'll give it away. You just tell me who to give it to. He said, I just thought maybe you might like that. I said, Jesus. He said, when you do my work, you always get the best. Always. He said, to do the work of God, you've got to believe on me. So when I believed on God, now, I didn't do that to get a watch. You know, I was thinking, well, you know, I'll get any kind of watch like anybody else. But the Lord blessed us with that. And I'll tell you what, it's his. And if he tells me to give it, look at some people going. <laughs> I will. It's just that simple. See, that's the point I'm trying to get over. Jesus said, if you want to do the works of God, you must believe on him whom he hath sent. The point two, listen to this. Belief is a force far greater than the human mind can conceive. Listen to this point. Belief is a force far greater than the human mind can conceive. Turn with me to Psalms chapter one. I want to show you something real quickly. Y'all enjoying this? Praise God. Psalms chapter one, right in the middle of the Bible. Listen to the point. Belief is a force far greater than the human mind can conceive. The book of Psalms, chapter 1. First verse. Bless it. Didn't say beat down, despond it, and destroy it. He said, bless it is the man. The word man there means the human race, mankind. Includes women. I believe in women. I like women. Preachers have preached women in the hell for centuries. Preachers are always preaching on women, poor women. 20 years ago, a man could wear the top fashion of the day, but his wife had to have a $3 flower sack dress so she could look holy. Hair on her leg. Oh, God. My Lord. <laughs> Whipped to pieces. But her husband could go down there and buy a Botany 500 suit and wear the top fashion of the day. Isn't that amazing? If women are so bad, how come everybody want one? Isn't that amazing? Preachers are preach women in the hell over everything, yet they all want one. Some of them want two or three. <laughs> but if they're so bad, I come everybody want one. I feel sorry for you women. I felt sorry for you. Y'all have been beat on for centuries. I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. He sets you free. 
God did not take Eve out of Adam's foot. He took her out of his side so he, she would stand by him side by side and he would see them as one created male and female, created he them in the image of God. Mm, praise the Lord. Isn't that glorious? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. No, no, notice that, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Have you ever stood in the way of sinners so they don't get saved? I've seen people jump up on people. Won't you get them cigarettes out your mouth? You're going to hell. Won't you get that 44-pound belly off your belt? Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.